The Utah Jazz never get the press and recognition they deserve as a small market team, even though they have consistently shown they're part of the better half of the teams in the NBA. This season is no different. Currently, they're on fire right now. They have won 10 straight games, putting them near the top of the Western Conference. So are these Utah Jazz a legit title contending team? First, let's take a look at the parts of the team, how they work as a cohesive unit, what's not working, and what needs to be improved. And guys, before we get started, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. The channel is really growing right now, so join the community. With that being said, let's get into this video. The Utah Jazz have gotten off to a hot start to the season, and a lot of it has to do with individual improvements players made in the offseason. Let's start with Donovan Mitchell, the second coming of Dwayne Wade with a three-point shot. He has been getting covered recently after Shaq said he's not a superstar and won't be one and that he is just an all-star. I agree and disagree with this statement. I don't think he has reached superstar status yet, but the potential is definitely there. He has consistently gotten better each season and has added to his game. This season his numbers are virtually the same, but it is clear he has gotten better. The way he's scoring is more versatile, he's getting his teammates involved more and his off-ball movement has really improved. Mitchell is not a superstar yet, but he's not just an all-star, he's an elite player in this game. Then there's Rudy Gobert, another player Shaq has been pestering all season long. I think everyone is on the same page about Rudy Gobert's $205 million contract. When news initially broke about this, I was thinking Rudy must have shown to that Jazz he added to his offensive game. I was completely wrong about this. He has regressed. His scoring averages have dropped by 3 points despite taking roughly the same number of shots. His field goal percentage has dropped by 9% and his free throw by 15%. His post game is suspect and he can't play even remotely outside of the paint. With that being said, Rudy is Rudy. He's the anchor to the Utah's defense and really deters players from driving inside and makes them settle for jumpers. Rudy is also the perfect complementary piece to Mitchell, offensively and defensively. Mitchell isn't the best defender. He's not at all bad, but he could be better. So when Mitchell lets a drive by, Gobert is big enough to contest a shot and make a dump off pass difficult. He also sets hard screens to Mitchell to free him up and roll hard, making the opposing team's defense collapse, giving open looks to not only Mitchell, but his teammates. His game has not improved, but he's a big reason as to why the Jazz are off to a hot start. The biggest individual improvement comes from Mike Conley. His first season with Utah was less than memorable, and it looked as if the Jazz had gotten ripped off in the trade. Conley was 32, had an Achilles injury, and just didn't look right. But it seems like everyone was wrong, and he just needed time to acclimate himself into the Jazz offense. After all, he did spend his entire career with the Grizzlies and was always used to being the primary ball handler. So playing with Donovan and Bojan must have been very different. This season, he's looking like his better years. He's healthy and it's clear he has learned to play off of Donovan and Bojan. He's moving off the ball, getting his team involved and in the right places and scoring at an efficient clip. He's averaging a team leading 6 assists a game while shooting 42% from 3 and scoring 16.5 points. His offensive rating has climbed over 13 points and defensively he's also doing better, even though that was never a problem with him. Jordan Clarkson is the other Utah player that has been stellar. His offensive production and efficiency right now is insane. He's a spark plug of the team, a Lou Williams type player where he checks into the game just scores so effortlessly. He's playing the best basketball of his career, shooting 41% from 3, 49% from the field, and 96% from the free throw line. That is ridiculous efficiency for a player coming off the bench. He has truly embraced his role, leading that second unit, and getting the ball moving. He's a big time contender this season for the 6th man of the year award. Other key players that have helped in their hot start to the season are Joe Ingles, 
Royce O'Neal and Derek Favors. Every team can use players like these two. They hit the three ball at an efficient clip and defend very hard. Ingles also gives the Jazz another reliable playmaking option and Royce is just such a nice complimentary piece to have on any team. He hustles, can shoot the three and rebounds very well at his size, currently averaging 6.5 rebounds a game. He's 6'4". To put that into perspective, Brooke Lopez is 7 feet and is only averaging 5 boards a game. Bojan Bogdanovic is the last critical piece of the Jazz team. He's gotten off to a very rough start with his efficiency down the drain. I don't think this is something Jazz fans should be worrying about. He's coming off of wrist surgery and he's a shooter so it might just take him a little bit of time getting used to his stroke. Just be patient, he's more than a solid wing player. All these individual jumps players have made is a reason why the Jazz are off to a hot start but also how the team is playing together as a cohesive unit on the offensive and defensive end. The offense Snyder has implemented encourages ball movement and screen runoffs where players are put in opportunities of high percentage catch and shoot looks. Six, I repeat six, Jazz players are taking at least four three-pointers a game. They lead the league in three-point attempts a game with 41.6 per game. Their offense has really modernized, playing four out, and them having an elite scorer in Donovan Mitchell helps. He's always penetrating, forcing the defense to collapse and getting his teammates open. If they don't collapse, he can take it straight to the rim or lob it to Rudy. They're third right now in offensive rebounding percentage, so when they're missing shots, Rudy is getting them a lot of second chance opportunities. Right now, they have the fifth highest offensive rating in the league. Where the Jazz can improve offensively is getting to the free throw line. Right now, they are 28th in the league in free throw attempts. Still though, a very good offensive team. What they are doing better cohesively is defense. They are communicating well when screens are being set and funneling players into Rudy Gobert and not tracking behind. Instead, sticking out in the perimeter to prevent kick out threes and this is exactly why the Jazz are allowing the third fewest three pointer makes in the league. Having Royce O'Neal, a straight hustle defensive player, Mike Conley, a former all defensive team player and Rudy Gobert whose resume speaks for itself allows the Jazz not only to mask Mitchell's shortcomings in defense but be an elite defensive team. They have the third highest defensive rating in the league. The Jazz are a really good team and have the makeup to make a deep playoff run but don't get overly excited by their scorching hot start to the season. They are playing historically right now from the 3 point line so I think we'll definitely see the team come back to reality and their record regress. They are making 40% of their threes right now. No team in NBA history, not even Steph Curry's Golden State Warriors or James Harden's Houston Rockets at their best have finished a season in the 40-40 club by attempting 43s per game and hitting 40% of them. So realistically, the Jazz shooting numbers will come down. Another reason is the Jazz have been very fortunate that rather than Joe Ingles who missed games for a sore heel and Donovan who just got placed into concussion protocol, they have been very healthy. None of their players have contracted coronavirus or have even needed to go into COVID protocol. They have had a very healthy team unlike most of the league and right now the COVID situation is not if it will happen but when it will happen. So expect the Jazz record to regress. Now to answer this question, are the Jazz a legitimate title contending team? I would say they are more of a dark horse, very capable of pulling an upset but I wouldn't bet on them beating a healthy Lakers or Clippers squad. They're still missing an elite wing player that can complement Donovan and Rudy. Acquiring Beal or someone of that caliber can shift the tide but as of now they are a dark horse and will need to go on a miracle run to capture the title. See, I can see the Jazz knocking out the Clippers from the playoffs but the Lakers, I can't. They're just too star studded and have LeBron James. He practically makes the finals every year. Only way I can see it is if AD can't play due to injury. Then the makeup of the Jazz team stands a chance to knock out the Lakers. But rather than that, this team is a dark horse and is a piece away from capturing the NBA title.
This is Earn Your Ranks, where we only talk about ball. Signing off.